Hello everyone, this is Dr. Lennon, and um, attempting this video for the third time. I've been having some sound issues, so hopefully it works out. Um, so I, I'm going to take you through the process of the naive approach again. So we have uh, six weeks and six data values, uh, and I've just copied those into Excel, except for I deleted them. So uh, let me add those in quickly. Um, so 19, and then what do we have for the final five? 14, 16, 11, 17, and 15. 14, 16, 11, something, and 17, I think. I forgot. Uh, 11, 17, and 15. All right, let me give me one more look just to make sure I got those in right. All right, so we're good to go. So um, the forecast with a naive approach is kind of the simplest thing you can imagine. We're just going to pretend like we're forecasting, for instance, and by saying the weather tomorrow is going to be about like it is today. So uh, you just pick the previous data value, and we forecast it for the next week. So our prediction, um, we don't have a forecast for week one because we don't have any data before week one. So uh, week two, we'll say, okay, we predict 19 because that's what happened in week one. What would happen in week two? Uh, we had 14 there, so that will be our forecast in week three, and so on. Uh, week four, our forecast is 16. Week five, 11. Week six, 17. Um, at the end, they'll ask us for a forecast for week seven, and we'll use that one unused point 15. That'll be our forecast. <coughs> the forecast error is pretty straightforward. Uh, you just do the data value minus the actual forecast that we had with the naive approach. And we can fill that down. And I've created a bunch of columns kind of in advance because I know what question they're going to ask. Um, but the, these are pretty useful in uh, all the questions for the chapter 8 assignment. The square of the forecast error, we just square the forecast error. So raise each one to the second power. So we just do it to the first one and then fill those down. Absolute value, um, that just makes the uh, any negative value the positive value. It's the distance from zero. So ABS is the command in Excel. Highlight the forecast error, and we're good to go. So let's drag those down. And then the percentage error, this one, what we do is we take the forecast error and we divide it by the corresponding actual data value. So it's going to be divided by 14, the data value. So don't use the forecast value. Make sure you use the data value. And then copy all those down. And then the absolute percentage error is, again, just the absolute value of that column right there. So highlight the adjacent cell, and then fill them all down. All right, there we go. Now we have means of some of the selected columns that they ask us for. The mean of the absolute error, we just use the average command and highlight the appropriate column. So absolute error is column F. The mean square error is uh, the square of the forecast error. And uh, this is known as the MSE, which uh, they ask about in several other questions in this chapter. And then the absolute percent error is this last column we did. So there are the values for 18.8 and 28.46 about. So let's enter those. Uh, so for 18.8, um, two decimal places, I forgot what I said. Uh, let's take a look. 28.46, um, because we need to round up, because two decimal places, this is, uh, we need to turn it into a percentage before we round. And then the forecast for the last one will be uh, 15, so here to here. So uh, 28.46 and 15. And 15. Let's verify that these are correct. They sure are. They all came out OK. Um, and one last word of advice. When we're doing the mean square error or the MSE, uh, you just find the forecast error, observation minus the forecast, compute the square in each by uh, just uh, doing the square of an adjacent cell and then dragging down to copy the formula. And then the MSE just says take the average of that last column. So I hope this helps you out with the assignment. Uh, good luck. Bye.